Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Zoidrake and we're back for episode 2. Yes, you heard it right. Episode 2, double upload today. And today we're going to be actually going back to how to make a 2D platformer game on Construct 3. I'm actually going to be looking on how to change from level 1 to level 2 to level 3. A level changer, innit? How you go from one level to another level. Of course, you have to add that in. So for this level, we're going to just create another sprite. So we're obviously going to do what we did in the last episode. And we're going to double click on our screen. And we're going to add a sprite. Click wherever. And this is going to be our, our level finish button. And we're actually going to make it 8x8 eight eight again. And we're going to make it look like, you know, a little door. Let's make it like a white door. Why not? Actually, like a like a light green door. Like a lime color door, you know? Something like that. Let's make it like that. Like that. And then like this. This would be this would be our exit door. And we're just going to place it here. And we're obviously going to click on size. And we're going to change the percentage to, I don't know, 400%. I think that could be good. And then just gonna, and we're actually gonna click on not on here. We're gonna go into its properties, and we're gonna add behaviors, and we're actually gonna add gravity. Actually, hmm, hmm. We're actually gonna add platformer to it, and you'll see why in a second. This is gonna add gravity to it. And we're actually gonna do default controls. I'm gonna turn it off, and this way we won't be able to control the door, but it should fall onto the platform. There we go, and it will be on the platform at all times. So we can place it there, uh, and this is where we're going to place our platform. We can place it like this, and we're going to go to our main sheet now, and we're actually going to program this. So we're actually going to create a new group. So we're going to click G. For free for people using a free version of Construct, you don't need to add a group. Skip this step. And we're going to do uh, level change. And now for the people who do have the free version, you can just do add event rather than add event to level change. And we're going to do player on collision with another object. And we're going to check and change that to sprite. Uh, and we're going to actually rename the sprite to, uh, oh, sorry, I pressed <laughs> Chrome help. Press F2 and we're going to just do uh, next level. And then we can just add door. So we're going to call it next level door. Not a great name, but it'll do. <laughs> so now we're going to click add action and we're going to add... Um, uh, actually, before we add that, we're going to click V now. We're going to add a variable, and we're going to call this level. I'm going to do the initial number to be 1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do on collision with level, we're going to do system, and we're going to click add to level 1. And then we're going to do uh, system, uh, go to, go to layout, uh, actually, sorry, that's not the right one. Go to layout by name, so you have to make sure it's by name. Going to click on that one, and here we're going to write inside the speech marks. We're going to in capitals write what are the L in capitals because that's how we did it over here in our layouts. We're going to call it level and then underscore, and then that's what you're going to write there. And you're going to go outside of the speech bubbles and add the an and, and then type in level because that's the name of our variable. So that will now do level underscore plus the number that our level is. So obviously as it goes up by one, it will next go to level two, then level three, then level four. And this is a really simple way of doing that, right? So now if we actually add a level, so let's just duplicate our level two. We're gonna click duplicate and this is gonna be our level two. Uh, and let's just change up our level two, double click on it to open it up. And we're just gonna change it up just to looks a bit different. Just gonna make it look like this. And we're actually gonna face a problem here. And I know we're gonna face a problem when we enter this level. And I hope we can spot it. Okay, so we're going to go from level one and touch that, and we're on level two. Okay, you see, so it teleported our player to what seems like the right place, right? If we go to level two and we actually move this uh, to here, because our player actually touches the door here, he respawns here again. And I do have a solution for this, and it's very, very simple. Oh, and we started on level two accidentally. Sorry for that. You're going to have to click on level one to play level one. That's something I should have probably specified. <laughs> so I'm going to click on our door and look at that. We're, uh, we're here now, which is weird because that shouldn't happen, but it did. And I'll say, I think I know why. It's because this is where we spawned our player. But I do have something that we should add, and you should add a spawner object to all your levels. So we're actually going to double click and we're going to type in sprite. I'm going to place it down. This one we're going to make 16 by 16 as it's going to make writing uh, onto it much better. And we're actually going to zoom in on it. And let's say our starter object is going to be red. And we're just going to actually let's make it green because start, you know, green. And then uh, let's say in black characters, we're going to write actually in white characters, it will blend, it will show more. We're just going to write 
uh, s just to know that this is a spawner object not the greatest of s's but we're going to keep it it looks pretty cool and this will be our spawn object so we're actually going to rename it in our sprites in our object types with f2 to spawn object and we're actually going to keep it here so now if we actually move our player wherever we want uh this player doesn't really matter now but you have to remember if you want the player to appear on the level the player needs to be somewhere on your scene so you can actually keep it out of the scene and put the spawner objects now wherever you want your player to spawn so where we want our player to spawn we have to actually select how that works so we're actually going to have to place it into our next level as well so we're going to just drag and drop it from here onto our level and we're going to put it onto the platform we want it. The player can even be here, but the player will spawn on our spawner platform. And how do we do that? Well, we go to our main sheet again, and here we go system, actually we go player, and then we go go, um, wait, sets, sets, set, 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 position. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Set position, there we go. And we're gonna go spawner object dot X, and for the Y, we're gonna type in spawn object dot y and that should work like this and we're going to click done so now we actually when we go to it will tell us wherever it takes us okay we need to go to level one obviously uh, we're going to go here it'll put us it should put us there and i have no idea why it didn't i see why because here we now have to add another thing another thing i was silly about we have to add an event and we have to go system on we have to type in on start of layout and we have to add this again so we're going to copy and paste it from here i'm going to put it here so at the start of every level it's going to teleport our player to the spawn object that's something we should have probably thought about so there you go it spawned it on the spawn object and it spawned us on the spawn object we obviously don't want our spawning object showing up in game this is something that should be invisible behind the screen so now let's click on our spawn object again and we're going to go to the properties I'm going to scroll down to where it says initially visible and we're just going to turn it off. So now that should be unchecked. So now when we play our game, the spawn object is no longer visible. I'm not sure why it's visible there. Um, oh, okay. We did, we didn't save initially visible. Just make sure you save it to be initially visible off. So now if we go uh, and play a game again, we're going to notice that there's another problem now. We can go from level to level, right? We can go from level to level, but um, if we die uh, or fall off the edge, we don't come back. And that's where we're going to use our spawner object once again. So we're going to go here and we're going to go into, I'm going to make another group and full detection. Again, if you're on a free version, just don't add a group. It's very simple to do this without a group. It's actually not needed. I'm actually going to grab my variable and put it on top of it. It will let me. There we go, because I do like doing that. And I'm going to put the start on top as well, because that's something that starts on start of the layout. So I do like it having a top for no reason whatsoever. We're actually going to add here, and we're going to do if player. And then we're going to be able to... Um, outside layout and then we go scroll down to where it says position and it says inside is it outside the layout so whenever the player actually exits the layout we're gonna add so that it we can actually copy and paste it from here it's just gonna go straight to our spawner object again and we can actually add another condition uh, add another condition and we can do if player actually we can add uh, we have to add this so if we go to our level we can add like a red zone where if it touches the red zone it'll it'll delete it which we will add just for the sake of the tutorial but this is something that is not required we're just going to add the sprite we're going to make this one red let's make it this red and resize it to 16 by 16 forgot to do this and now once we place it we can just uh okay i changed the angle i do not like that uh, we're going to make it a massive line and we're just going to put it on the middle so if the player ever touches this line it will be removed and obviously we also want to click on this object in our thing here and we're just going to rename it to uh, death line and we're going to go into properties i'm going to do initially visible because we do not uh, we're going to turn off initially visible because we do not actually want this in our game do we we don't and now if we go to our main sheet and we add another condition we can go player on collision with another object and we can select the death line and then if we click on our actual whole like statement here and right click it and add and we can make it a or yeah there we go make or block so whether this or this is true 
it will respawn our player. So let's just test that out. If we jump outside of our screen, it will reset. As you can see, here's the line of the screen. It's not seen because it's black, but it just that is where our line is. And if we do hit our, our little line that we placed around here, our player goes back. Also, we can obviously edit this. We can put it a bit lower. We can put it right here if we want. And we can also copy and paste it into our other level. There we go. Okay, so we got full detection and we got changing levels. That's really cool. And that's really it for this episode. That's pretty simple. And that's how simple it does get. We will go into even more depth in episode three, where we will add our first obstacle and we will also maybe add sounds. We'll see. In our further episodes, we'll add so much to our game. We'll make the game look much nicer. And for that, you're going to have to stay tuned. My name has been Zodrek. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a nice comment, and bye bye.